हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोहन चंद्र जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल कॉल डी एन ए टोपो आइसोमेज अंडर द पेपर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिकमेंडेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट वन द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज दैट बाय द एंड ऑफ बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल students will understand what are topo isomerase what are their function and how many types of dna topo isomerase are actually there and also we'll try to understand how topo isomerase is been used as a drug target to take care of certain disease such as antibiotic resistant bacteria as well as how it is used in human to take care of, to take care of cancer cancer cells because it is used as a chemotherapy therapeutic drug target as well dna topo isomerases are the enzyme which are present across all kingdom and this is a very crucial enzyme that is involved in cellular dna metabolism and as i will discuss in the future in in further slides as well topo isomerases can be classified into type 1 and type 2 categories and so far we have found range of enzymes that are present in different organism which is shown in this table also and what all function they can carry out what are their size for example bacterial topo isomerase 1 which belong to a type 1a category is from e coli it's a 97 amino acid monomer which act as a monomer it can relax positive supercoil it cannot relax a positive supercoil uh, but can introduce negative supercoil similarly eukaryotic topo isomerase 1 which belong to a type 1b category this enzyme is from humans it's again a monomer of 91 amino acid but it can relax both positive and negative supercoils from a vaccine virus we have another topo isomerase 1 which belong to a category uh, type 1b it's a monomer from 37 amino acid it requires atp for its activity and uh, topo isomerase 3 which is again from e coli is a type 1a topo isomerase which is a monomer of 73 amino acid it has a potent decatenation activity reverse gyrase type 1a is from a thermophilic arachia now this is a 143 amino acid monomer it can introduce positive supercoils into a dna but in a atp dependent manner dna gyrase which is a type 2a topo isomerase is again from e coli it is a homodimer that means there are two different subunits of gyrase gyrase a and gyrase b which makes a homodimer uh, and are of uh, 97 amino acid and 90 amino acid now this one is very crucial in introducing a negative supercoil and relieving the torsional stress in front of the replication as well as the transcription machinery then you have a topo 4 isomerase which is again type 2 uh, a category and there are t4 topo isomerase which is from bacteriophage t4 it has two copy of three subunit which are the 58 amino acid 51 amino acid 18 amino acid it can relax but cannot introduce supercoil and eukaryotic topo isomerase 2 which is type 2a uh, topo isomerase from human is a 174 homodimer it can relax supercoil but again cannot induce a supercoil topo isomerase 4 which is a type 2 topo isomerase from e coli is again have two subunit each of uh, par e and par c subunit it can relax but not super, can induce supercoil uh, and is a very very potent uh, decatenase enzyme topo isomerase 6 is a type 2b and from it's from arachia is again two subunit each um Uh, which are 46 uh, 45 and 60 amino acid they it can relax the supercoil but cannot induce a dna supercoil so as you can see topo isomerase is present across the uh, kingdom but it has a different function has a different size across the kingdom and have play an important role in under in underwinding as well as overwinding the dna altering the dna supercoiling status of the cell we will discuss about these enzymes specially type 1a type 1b 
and their functions type 1a type 1b type 2a and type 2b about their structural similarity and how do they relax the superpile in the cell. So what are the major function of DNA topoisomerase? Topoisomerase play an important role during transcription and replications. Let, us, let me explain how. So during transcription and uh, replication process, the protein complex has to find the DNA and DNA is actually overwound and highly condensed by DNA binding proteins and thus providing them a, chrom a structure or which is mostly in form of supercoiling or in terms of knots and all these DNA structure need to be resolved so that the protein complex involved in transcription machinery as well as in replication would be able to access the DNA and topoisomerase does that job. So what are the primary function? They actually relax or also can introduce DNA supercoiling into a naked DNA as well as a DNA which is bound to a protein. Also topoisomerase play an important role during the recombination process. During the recombination process they allow the DNA strand passage between two DNA complex or two, two, two DNA strands. The very important role that DNA topoisomerase play is in DNA condensation, especially during the cell cycle. So if you remember that during cell cycle, DNA is replicated and then thereby they make two copies of DNA. Now in, pro in that process, the DNA has to be first unwounded and then again compacted or condensed into a very small nucleoid. Therefore, these DNA topoisomerase play an important role in not only in condensing but also in unwinding the DNA. And lastly, there are the major activities that they are involved in which are termed as decatenations or catenations. That means when there are two strands of DNA which are linked together, when they are separated out, this process is called decatenation or when two DNA molecules are linked, that process is called catenation. Also, they are involved in knotting and unknotting reactions, which often happens during the cellular DNA metabolism. Types of DNA topoisomerase. Depending upon what function a type of DNA uh, topoisomerase is conducting, it can be classified as type 1 or type 2. So type 1 topoisomerases are the one which introduce a single strand DNA cut. And what it uh, allows you to do it in that case it allows cell uh, DNA to either relax the supercoiling or introduce the uh, supercoiling as well. Depending upon its structure as well as in sequence they can be further classified into type 1A, type 1B or type 1C. Interestingly all of these uh, types does not have any sequence and structural similarities. Further, they catalyze very similar reaction. Though they are not structurally and sequentially similar, they have a very se similar sequence, uh, re uh, similar reaction in which they introduce a transient break into a single strand DNA, which is thereafter get ligated. Type 2 topoisomerase are the one which introduce a cut at both the strands. So you have a double strand cut and then these enzymes can be further classified into type 1, 2A or type 2B. Interestingly, type 2 uh, have a very uh, see, uh, similar sequence similarity, uh, very similar structural similarity with type 1A in terms of its function as well as in terms the reaction is carried out. Type 1 uh, DNA topoisomerase is an ATP independent enzyme. So that means these enzymes don't require ATP for carrying out the reaction or carrying out their enzymatic activity. So where do they get their energy? They get their energy by relieving the torsional stress that are present in the supercoiled DNA. However, it remains unknown how these enzymes are utilizing as well as identifying this topology to generate that energy. Type 1 enzymes can be further subdivided into three categories. Type 1A, 
type 1b and type 1c these enzymes can relax positive as well as negative supercoiling and only reverse chiase is the one which can induce a positive supercoil these enzymes can introduce they can do this job either one by one or can do it simultaneously so one enzyme in the same time can do both the jobs type 1a dna topoisomerase modulates linking number between two dna strands which means that it can change the superhelical turn and thereby the linking number is changed type 1 topoisomerase is an enzyme which is involved in a transient covalent bond that happens between the broken end of dna with either 5 prime end or the 3 prime end and thus which is get re-annealed after the activity is over and by doing so it can allow the passage of unbroken strand which relieves the torsional stress so here is in this schematic we represent how many types of reaction which can be taken care of by type 1 uh, uh, dopo isomerase so the very first reaction is relaxation in which as you can see in this picture the circular form of dna is supercoiled heavily supercoiled where there are strands passing each other thereby is creating a superhelical structure now by introducing a single nick and resealing it it can relax that supercoil form of dna into a closed circular form of dna it can introduce knotting and a knotting reaction again shown in this picture you can introduce a knot as well as can relax it by introducing a single strand cut and subsequently ligating it similarly it can allow the uh, formation of duplex as you can see in this picture two circular dna are being uh, linked or catenated to do uh, are linked to form a duplex dna and in the last it can carry out the catenation and decatenation activity in this we have two separate duplex dna which are catenated can be separated out or can be catenated again to form to carry out the activity there are two reactions knotting as well as unknotting and decatenation and catenation processes which are reversible that means the enzyme can do both these activity one after another or can do simultaneously in type 1 8 dna topo isomerases are the one which are present in all actually uh, bacteria eukaryotes and arachia they show sequence similarities as well as structural and thereby having a mechanistic similarity in a way these enzymes process a dna substrate type 1 dna topo isomerase they require metal divalent ion as well as atp to undertake the reaction substrate that is in this case a single strand dna is captured by domain 3 as well as domain 1 of enzyme and which is brought together brought close to the active site where it is creates a break by catalytic tyrosine which results in a transient 5 prime phosphotyrosine intermediate and now this intermediate is immediately separated using domain 2 and which allow uh, which makes a kind of a hinge for allowing the dna strands to pass and once this passage has happened domain 3 and domain 2 will and allow reseal and uh, relieve the torsional stress these enzymes type 1 a enzyme can uh, undertake both intermolecular reactions as well as intramolecular reaction that means it can relieve the stress within the same more dna molecules or or between two different dna molecules in this schematics we see the role how domain 3 and domain 1 is capturing the dna molecule at the active site as you can see in this picture the active site is shown in the black circle so dna the single strand dna is captured by domain 3 and domain 1 and brought to the active site where this active site where this site the cleavage happens and now domain 2 works as a hinge which removes the which passes which allows the passage of this single strand dna the intramolecular reaction which is undertaken by type 1 uh, a dna topo isomerase as i mentioned in the previous slide here is a schematic to show it as you can see in this a supercoiled dna 
is captured by the enzyme and here the yellow region represents the active site which is between domain 3 and domain 1 as are shown in the crystal structure in previous slide. So the very first step that takes place is nicking the single strand as you can see in that picture at cycle B. Then what it allows that passage of a strand, annealing of a strand and then this cycle can continue depending upon the number of substrate that are allowed. So they, the cycle include three, step, uh, three or four major steps. Step A where DNA is captured, B is where the active site, uh, the capture, uh, the break is made. C is a site where the strain passage is allowed, then there is an annealing process and then eventually the release. Intermolecular reaction. As I mentioned earlier also in the, or in the as well as in the previous slide, intramolecular reaction was within the same DNA molecule while intra is between two different DNA molecules and shown in this picture in two different colors. The reaction takes place at the active site again, follows the very similar step which is shown in the previous uh, intramolecular uh, reaction. However, because the topology of these two is little bit different, that's why we see a, a different method of strand passage and the resealing of the DNA molecule. Importantly, this reaction is reversible and the same molecule can introduce, can separate these two intermolecules as well as can bring together and catene or can or uh, link these two DNA molecules as well. Type 1b topoisomerase. These isomerase, uh, these type 1 family is found in eukaryotes, pox viruses, bacteria but are absent in arachia. These type 1b topoisomerase are involved in both positive supercoil as well as negative supercoil. So positive supercoils are the overwound DNA which we see in front of the replication or the transcription machinery and the underwound DNA is the one which is negatively supercoil and has less energy to it and can be easily opened up and these can they, they can resolve these two by a rotatory mechanism which we'll uh, discuss in future slides in this type 1b enzyme enzyme wraps its, uh, itself around dna uh, and creates a 3 prime phosphotyrosine intermediate which allows the 5 prime end to freely rotate because one of the end is now nicked so the other uh, other strand of dna is totally free to rotate now in this process what happens is that one strand is easily uh, twist around another one. Once the twisting and the, rela the release of the torsional starch is done, the topoisomerase re-ligates the broken strand. This entire reaction is ATP independent because phosphomonoester bond is replacing the phosphodiester bond between DNA backbone and tyrosine residue at the active site. Here is the crystal structure of type 1b topoisomerase uh, which is also in this case it is a human topo uh, isomerase 1. In this the core domain which is shown in, in red and blue and these are the one which play an important role in uh, nicking as well as sealing of the DNA strand. Type 1c topoisomerases. These are the recently discovered forms of or recently nomenclatured or recently named type 1 topoisomerase. Initially, they were found in methanoprius kenderli. Later on, there are uh, topoisomerase 5 is found in different bacterial species as well. Surprisingly, there is no sequence similarity of these type 1 topoisomerase with any other topoisomerase that are known. But in terms of its mechanistic and functional feature, they are very similar to type 1b because they create a 3 prime transient phosphotriester bond, transient bond and which allows uh, to relax the positive and the negative supercoils. The reaction is independent of ATPs as well as, NA, uh, as, well as divalent cation and again because the 3 prime end is, is free it can allow the rotation of 5 prime end as well. Type 2 topoisomerase. These kind of these types of topoisomerase are found in uh, bacteria, eukaryotes and arachia. And type 2 topoisomerase changes the linking number by 2 and actually they create a double strand break. They, they cut both the strands of the DNA and that's how they are release the uh, torsional stress. So mechanistically these enzymes 
binds to duplex DNA and cuts to the opposite strand of the DNA, uh, both the opposite strand, and then enzyme attaches itself to the five prime end of the DNA duplex and forms a phosphotyrosine bond, which results in a change in the conformation and opening up of the enzyme and thereby creating a gate or the opening which is terms a G segment of DNA. Now this G segment of DNA is will be able to capture the other DNA duplex and during the relaxation or knotting or unknotting reaction of the other DNA duplex from the same strain and while the catenating or decatenation reaction from the two different DNA molecules are named as T segments are allowed to pass through this open DNA gate. Thereafter, the result, as I mentioned earlier, also results in a change in the linking number that is the turn, superhelical turn by 2. And these reaction which is undertaken by type 2 topoisomerase it depends upon the divalent cations as well as requires energy that's ATP to carry out the reaction. Here are the types of the reactions which are undertaken by type 2 topoisomerases primarily relaxation of supercoiling and as I mentioned in type 1 it's a very similar where you have a helical structure can be converted into a closed circle form circular DNA but the reaction is also reversible. You can form a super helical structure from a closed circular DNA or you can form a slow circular open DNA from a supercoil. And compared to type 1 topoisomerases, uh, where the reaction is unidirection, in this case, it can be bidirectional. Again, the knotting and unknotting reaction is similar to the type 1A topoisomerase is reversible. That means it can introduce the knot as well as can uh, remove the knot. And uh, in the last, it is the principal job of this particular enzyme is in catenation and decatenation, which is a very, very crucial process. And similar to type 1A, it, the reaction is again uh, reversible. That means it can carry out reaction in both direction. So there are two types of topoisomerases, type 2 topoisomerases, uh, type 2A and type 2B. The example of type 2A topoisomerase are DNA gyrase, eukaryotic topoisomerase 2 and bacterial topoisomerase 4, also known as topo 4. Type 2B topoisomerases are structurally distinct, biochemically distinct and compare to a, and comprise a single family of enzymes. For example, topoisomerase 6, type 2B topoisomerases are found in arachia as well as in higher plants. There are some mechanistic different mechanistic difference between type 2A and type 2B enzyme. For example, in type 2A, double strand DNA breaks are resulting in a four base pair overhang while in type 2B the double stranded break results in a two base pair overhang and type 2A topoisomerase are there to simplify the equilibrium of DNA topology it can uh, alter it significantly while type 2B topoisomerase cannot simplify the DNA topology beyond a specific equilibrium that means it cannot continue to do uh, it it cannot simplify the DNA topology after a specific value. Here is a schematic how type 2 DNA topoisomerase allows two DNA strand to either uh, to resolve and this schematic as you can see in this picture you have two gates N gate and G gate. So the reaction follows in such a way that you have a DNA strand which is captured by this protein as you can see in very first figure what happens in that case that you it allows this uh, formation of a gate through which the T strand which is shown in this picture T strand is able to uh, get into this uh, into the into the protein into the domains thereafter the domain is closed now the reaction is carried out within that uh, within the chromosome or within the uh, protein molecule um, this reaction is require is requires ATP and uh, the entire process is ATP dependent and what happens in this case that the gate is closed and it is called DNA gate thereafter 
the DNA which is already captured by this protein will be released and then what happens and that happens when you have another gate which is opening at the uh, lower half of this protein shown in this configuration which is called the G gate which results in release of this uh, DNA strand and in the end what you see the protein gets into this original conformation where the, uh, it's both both the gates are closed and this cycle is further repeated when you have next round of DNA molecule coming in and which requires the uh, strand passage. Um, topoisomerase makes an excellent drug target. This is because as we have already seen the topoisomerase is conserved all across the kingdom. So from bacteria to arachia we have topoisomerase present in the cell. Now and topoisomerase is very essential from the time the cell has been born till the time the cell has been uh, divided into two daughter cells. During entire this process, topoisomerase play an important role, uh, whether it is in DNA condensation, whether it is in DNA replication, or in DNA separation as well. Therefore, this makes an uh, excellent target for cytotoxic drug to uh, to take care of uh, antibody uh, to take care of the um, bacteria which can um, which are pathogenic. So inhibitors of both type of type 1 as well as type 2 topoisomerases are available in bacteria primarily DNA gyrase as well as topo 4 which is another type 2 topoisomerase is targeted by drug molecules which are uh, be which belongs to quinol family or cormin. So major quinols are ciprofloxin and cormins are naldexic acid. In eukaryotes also. Um, we have topoisomerase which acts as a target for chemotherapy drugs. As you know, chemotherapy drugs or the cancer uh, drugs are the drugs which target those uh, cells which are rapidly growing. And topoisomerase play an important role in DNA unwinding as well as in DNA condensation. Therefore, uh, these, um, uh, uh, this protein makes an excellent target for chemotherapy drug as well. For example, campo uh, Camptothecin is one of the well-known chemotherapeutic drug which targets topoisomerase 1. These inhibitors, the mechanism or action, mechanism or action of these uh, drugs is either they make a change in the, uh, in the uh, protein conformation which would hinder in the uh, substrate uh, metabolism or uh, in the annealing of uh, uh, DNA post DNA damage. Uh, once the cut is made and then it also would uh, not allow the movement of uh, DNA which is captured by the protein to be released therefore making an uh, adduct or also called as the uh, poison. One of them that how topoisomerase been able to identify these topologies like how various uh, topologies whether it's positive supercoil, negative supercoil or not a DNA is been recognized by these topoisomerase. How two different topoisomerase, though they are acting at different substrate, maintain their equilibrium or uh, homeostasis when they are taking care of the DNA topology as such? Because, uh, because in a bacteria, if or in a, any any uh, organism, if you have highly supercoiled DNA or you have a uh, loosely compacted DNA would have adverse effect on the cell viability as well. So it is it remains unknown how these uh, proteins are actually been able to um, identify these different topologies and also how they are interacting with each other. Therefore, uh, it is required that uh, more research is required in this area to understand how these proteins are carrying out this, these specific activities. Thank you very much. So in the end, I hope uh, students will understand what exactly topoisomerases are and topoisomerases are very crucial and essentially very conserved uh, protein molecules across kingdom and depending upon the number of cut they make into a DNA strand, they can be classified into type 1 or type 2 uh, types of topoisomerase. Topoisomerases are very critical in terms of uh, the cellular, meta, uh, cellular DNA metabolism because they are required 
for uh, machinery, various machinery, whether replication machinery or transcription machinery to access the DNA and then removing the all uh, the DNA supercoil, whether it's underwound or overwound, both the cases, those has to be removed by topoisomerases. Then also during recombination process, a very essential process in term of is DNA repair and any uh, and um, uh, lots of other processes. Uh, during this process, topoisomerase allows the strands passage. Um, very critical role topoisomerase plays in DNA condensation and compaction during cell cycle. And the specific reaction that is it is involved in the decatenation, catenation, knotting and unknotting of it intertwined DNA. Uh, topoisomerase actually um, uh, the role of these uh, enzymes in, in uh, cellular processes has been underappreciated, but with the ad advent of technology, the role of these enzymes into various cellular processes has been much appreciated. Now, we by using single, um, by using uh, flow, latest fluorescent imaging techniques, the role of topoisomerase in DNA cell cycle, uh, in, in cell cycle in bacteria has been uh, newly discovered, where it has shown that uh, topoisomerase acts simultaneously or act right behind the replosome and they, uh, removes the catenins that are generated post replication. And also, because this is a very essential and crucial enzyme for uh, um, uh, cell, uh, bacterial cell or eukaryotic cells, has been these are used as a drug target for, uh, for antibiotics uses as well as for the chemotherapy drugs. Uh, but there are major questions that are still remain unanswered that how topoisomerase actually recognizes the DNA topology and also how it uses the DNA structure as an energy to remove the uh, DNA complex structures. How different topoisomerases are interacting with each other because we know that gyrase and topo3 act opposite to each other. How they are complex interplay between those uh, enzymes are taking place and how uh, a better understanding of these, the function of these enzymes will be critical in understanding how uh, cell various cellular processes are being regulated.